So while I did show you how to make the bowling scene, including the bowling ball procedurally and the pins and the whole thing wrapped together in simulation, one thing I never talked about is how did I ever get that camera movement that kind of follows the bowling ball but still kind of looks handheld and shaky and they're zooming in and really there's a whole bunch of stuff going on and I'm gonna very quickly show you how to do that. So again, we have the bowling scene simulation. If you wanna learn how to make this, <laughs> there's an hour and a half worth of uh, tutorials you can watch about that, but this uh, kind of applies to any scene with the moving object, okay? Uh, so we wanna take the scene and now make a camera so we can film it, which in some sense, other than lighting, is kind of the most important part um, of the art direction. So, uh, currently there's no camera in the scene, as you can see, so I'm gonna shift A, add in a camera, and then um, without, uh, you know, moving the camera using, like, location and stuff like that, one thing I like to do right from the get-go, uh, go into the camera view, and then in view, camera to view. Uh, this is gonna make it so that when we navigate around the viewport, it's actually going to, <laughs> once we're in a good place, uh, it's gonna move the camera with it, okay? So we don't need to kind of, like, be in this, like, third-party third person, I don't know, uh, third person perspective kind of thing. We can literally just move it uh, with camera to view, and then when we're done, just disable that, and then your camera is going to be positioned wherever you want it to be, okay? Um, okay, so now if we play the scene, probably solid view would be faster. Uh, when we play the scene, uh, it doesn't follow the bowling ball, and it doesn't follow the action, nor does it shake or anything like that. And, you know, this is something we could add in with keyframes, but in the, you know, spirit of keeping things easy, procedural, and, you know, doing things in the easiest way possible, here's what you want to do. Uh, go to constraints. We are going to add in a damp track, uh, which basically means this is a constraint that follows an object or makes the object rotate towards another. Uh, so it's facing it. So with our camera, we're going to target the bowling ball. Um, and usually <laughs> you're going to have to keep uh, clicking these until you find the right one. For me, it almost always happens to be Z minus uh, that actually faces it. Uh, but you can see now when we click play, it's actually following the motion. But then the bowling ball falls, and it's gonna, you know, follow that for eternity, especially if we make that a bit longer. Uh, yeah, it's gonna follow that for eternity, so we need a way to fix that. So first thing we can do uh, is notice that the influence is actually controlling how strong is this constraint, right? If we set it to zero, it's not gonna follow this motion, uh, but of course we want it to follow a little. So I'm gonna, instead of one, I'm gonna set it to 0.8, uh, just so it's kind of like lagging behind the bowling ball and it's not perfect. Okay, nice. And then uh, before we do anything else, we do need to get rid of that thing where it's following it. Um, and there's no, and the thing is we can't like, you know, keyframe this to zero at a certain point because that's going to face this way again. Uh, so what I'm going to do is once we have this constraint and we're happy with it, we are going to F3 and type in bake action, which I guess I already did. Bake action. And what it's going to do is if we enable all of these, I know we, <laughs> we don't need all of these. We just need some of them, but I don't know which it is. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to bake all our constraints, all our information, uh, just down into keyframes that we can then animate and uh, delete and stuff like that. So for example, um, on this frame right here, right before it falls and we follow it, uh, we take all these keyframes, we delete them and down, and now you can see it doesn't actually follow uh, through, which is a good thing. Um, of course, it's kind of abrupt to where it uh, stops and all that, and we can fix that with a bit of camera shake and stuff like that. But first of all, uh, we have the bowling ball. I want it to like zoom in at a certain point, so let's say here. Uh, focal length is going to do that. Keyframe the focal length, which is independent of all the keyframes from before. I'm going to play this a bit and then zoom in to, like, I don't know, what, what a normal person would zoom into. So something like that. Keyframe. And now you can see we have a zoom in uh, during our motion, which is already something that makes it look a bit more realistic, like somebody's actually trying to film this thing. Um, one uh, piece of trickery is uh, you can set this uh, interpolation, so you hit T after selecting both of these. You could set it to back or something like that, just so there's a bit of bounce and it goes backwards a bit. Uh, this is kind of a dramatic zoom, or you could do bounce, but that one doesn't really make much sense. <laughs> um, I think I kept mine usually on either sinusoidal or quadratic, because that was the interpolation that I liked. It was nice and smooth, but it did end abruptly, okay? Um, now for the camera shake, that's going to make this super real, and it's going to shake more when we're zoomed in, by the way, um, which is a nice visual thing that is realistic, and it will make the uh, transition less abrupt. Um, to do that, all we need to do is, once we have all our key yeah, keyframes, uh, go into the graph editor, and you can see all our information in curves now, stuff like the uh, focal length, but also the uh, location, rotation, and all that. So I don't care about any of these. So I'm just going to isolate the rotation ones, uh, which you can see uh, there's not too much going on here because we need to add in our noise. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is with the X rotation, which, by the way, is uh, this axis of rotation, the up and down one. 
I'm gonna take this, uh, select X Euler rotation modifiers, and then add in noise. And you can see it's taken our rotation that already existed and just added in a, like a noise function, right? Um, just a linear combination, which is gonna be crazy. So first of all, this uh, first string slider is gonna distribute this out over time, just so it's a bit less chaotic, something like 20. Uh, so it's very smooth. Um, another thing we can do is this strength is how intense the amplitude uh, of this effect. We set that to like a tenth. And now you can see now we have like a shake that's a bit more reasonable. And again, it gets more strong as our focal length gets larger as we zoom in, uh, which is something that makes sense. Okay. Um, we can also add a bit of depth, which is just going to add a bit of extra jitter. Okay. Uh, copy this modifier since we already did all this work. Copy it. Uh, Z rotation. This is the like left and right kind of rotation. Uh, for the Z Euler rotation, we're just going to paste this and then move the phase over a bit. And I guess we'd have to zoom out and find this. But the phase is basically saying, uh, what seed do you want from this? So we don't want the exact same uh, animation. So I'm just moving over the seed and maybe making this a bit less intense. So maybe 0.06. And now you can see we also get some rotation in the other direction, which again, um, adds a bit of realism, but also makes it so that this transition where we're no longer using our damp track constraints, um, that's no longer uh, so obvious. And this is the kind of thing that, of course, looks better with motion blur and stuff like that. You could add in a bit of a jitter um, in this way to the focal length. You could literally add in an expression, although I, I don't think I'd recommend that. So if you add this in, it's going to be like zooming in and out kind of ridiculously, uh, depending on the strength of uh, what you do. But again, wouldn't recommend that, but you could. Um, so that's generally how I get the camera motion. It's usually just picking a camera, putting it down like a tripod, and then doing the zooms, the damp track, and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, hope you learned something about how to do this uh, thing. Now I guess all you have to do is wait hours for this to render. Anyways, uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial, that's a good thing. And I just want to mention at the end of all of these that the blend for this file, of course this one was available before because we finished the bowling scene. It's going to be available over at the Patreon so you can get this uh, whole bowling scene with the simulation, with the camera movement, everything. And additionally, all other blend files I've ever uploaded. I always want to say thank you to the patrons at the end of these uh, tutorials because, you know, they, they paid for it, right? <laughs> um, and I got to talk long enough for the credits to pass. So they get uh, blend files over there. They get exclusive tutorials every once in a while when I record them uh, that aren't posted to either channel, Discord access, behind the scenes, early access, uh, which is something I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, in the, re in the upcoming weeks since I'm going on vacation. Uh, so I'm going to record some stuff ahead of schedule. So early access for them. And I think that it's probably been long enough. So uh, there you go. Now you know how to make a move in camera. Hopefully that was useful. And uh, yeah, see ya.